I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Does anyone have any public comment on the agenda items? Does anyone have any public comment on anything? Yes, hi. Uh, my name is Ralph Hebner. I was here at the last meeting um, discussing uh, an issue with regards to my, my client who's here tonight about the, the towing license. And I was wondering if uh, there was to be any action taken on that this evening. The, the, the board has discussed it. There no action been taken, taken other than we feel as though that we were right in what we did. So uh, just so I can be clear, my client was issued a license. And then after he signed a lease and got inspected by the, by the, bill, the, uh, by the chief of police and all the other things, and a license was actually given to him that it was denied. So if you believe that that's a proper thing to do under the law, then I think the next proper thing for me to do on behalf of my client is under your local law, your own law, demand a hearing. Because your local law says that if a hearing, if, if a license is revoked for any reason, that the client, that the person who has that license is entitled to a hearing. So I make that formal request here this evening. For a hearing, you can contact my office. You've got my contact information. I do. Because we look, look forward to having that hearing and discussing that with the person who's in charge of that. Certainly okay. right. Okay. okay. And I want to remind the town that, as I expressed last time that I was here, that my clients put out a tremendous amount of money, okay, after he received the license. Okay. And then shortly afterwards, a few days later, it was revoked. Okay. Yes, sir. Very well. Will you contact me with regards to the hearing date? I will, sir. Okay, great. All right, thank you. Have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, could I speak on a non-agenda item? Sure. Usually I like to come with lots of facts, not many of which I have tonight. Um, I contacted the police department. I'm concerned, along with many others, about the narrow lanes on the Popolopin Bridge. And I wanted to find out how many accidents had occurred since the construction started. And of course, the police have to do a lot of digging to find out which things they've investigated are still. But I was told that the chief might possibly have those answers for me tomorrow. Um, the reason I'm here Oh, and when I spoke to the officer, who was very nice, and I'm sorry I don't remember his name, he said that he had written several tickets for people going 60 miles an hour and so in the 35 mile an hour zone. I always assumed that the accidents we had were not fatal because of low speed. But the minute you have somebody going 60 miles an hour, in an area where the passing is narrow and if they're distracted at all you have a dangerous situation and i thought i was very original in thinking of having the construction stoplights but no not <laughs> i noticed on the community page several people said it would be a good idea to have the lights and have it be one lane controlled by a traffic light. Um, I think that's a good idea. And you see them in other places. They had them down on 9W when they replaced the retaining wall. The waits are not terribly long. And um, I suppose the only concern or a concern that would have to be considered would be if it tracks back 
routes up to the Bear Mountain Circle. What kind of a problem would that be? But it certainly wouldn't hurt to slow down people on the circle. That's all I have to say. And I, I agree with you. I've suggested the traffic light myself. Uh, and I have seen them in other places, and they work fine. And uh, since they got rid of the toll booths, the traffic circle itself isn't the way it used to be. No. Not, not at all. The traffic moves around a circle. The only thing that holds it up sometimes is when Bear Mountain is closed, full parking lot, and they, they're they still trying to get in there and they get it all backed up. But uh, other than that, I, I agree. A, a traffic light would be great there. But hopefully they're going to be done, I think, this month. Didn't we say it would be this month? I think it's the end of next month, July 31st. By the end of July, they're oh, going, that's right, July, they're going to finish the project. Um, can oh. I, I just yes. comment? Yes, that's absolutely. Sure. I do not have an exact number of accidents on the bridge. I do, I want to say, I believe we've had four or five on the bridge since they, they started construction again. Uh, it might be more, but we, we, there has been an increase of accidents in that very narrow lane. A couple have been serious. Most of them are side swipes, mirrors, mi minor damage, no injuries. A lot of them are one of the vehicles leaves the scene. So it's increasing our number of, if you're on the state, we're investigating, and yes, speeds on 9W are absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, I have four family members who cross the bridge five days a week. I do two to three days a week. I feel like I'm a day late and a dollar short when I hear they're going to be done in July. However, I never respect government due dates completion dates are often not met absolutely <laughs> anyway thanks for your tolerance you, previous minutes of may the 22nd do i have a motion to uh, approve motion second all in favor aye thank you <coughs> I transferred uh, $77,815 from the consolidated account to the accounts payable to cover this week's check run. We paid uh, $3,196 for the diesel, uh, $4,844 for workers' comp, $15,423 for Rockland County solid waste hauling. $33,797 for uh, comp workers' compensation quarterly pay payment, and Cedar Pond Crane Service for removing uh, some trees and branches along the road got $4,500. We have a new person working the camera tonight. Um, if there's anything that at home that you think can be uh, Deterrent to you, not a deterrent, uh, aggravating to you, or maybe if you can't hear, hear us, which my microphone is way out there, that might be better. Um, please give us a call here at the town hall. Uh, I, I think my number's around somewhere. You can, you can give us a call and let us know. Other than that, I think we'll have a very well televised meeting. Uh, we did some budget, budget transfers, or we're doing some budget transfers, I should say, uh, from sanitation salaries to sanitation collecting uh, stipend, uh, $1,000 to cover unbudgeted stipend, dog control other expenses to dog control training, $61 for training and expenses. Expenses were higher than budgeted. Uh, Water, other expenses to water personal services, $5,000 for additional time installing endpoints, which are go on the meters. And sewer main construction to sewer contractual, 
five thousand dollars for new pumps. I have a motion to accept the budget transfers. Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Board liaison reports. Councilman King. All right. Well, good evening, everyone, and good evening, everyone from home, at home, that is. So, very quickly, I got a few notes uh, for a couple of my colleagues who were not present this evening for other uh, commitments they had. So, starting with Councilman uh, DeWitt, he says that uh, he wanted to say congrats for a very successful second annual Community Day, Family Fun Day. Uh, that happened at Figgins Field. And uh, he wanted to also say very uh, high, a uh, big thank you to all that were involved in the organization of that, to include the young people, the uh, youth uh, group that came in before us, the Town of the Highlands United Youth. And uh, just a huge success from his perspective. Um, and big thanks to Gary Boyce, Tiffany Montalise, Greg Marr, Rick Jersey and all the highways department for help time and contributions to the event okay so that's that one and then um, you have Dean stuff or you want me to run no you got it you covered it okay so Dean wanted to say uh, that likewise the fishing derby was a huge success was very well attended um, and uh, just very well run and he couldn't say enough about the fishing derby. So thanks to, to all that organized those two events in particular. For me, I just wanted to remind everybody that we got another opportunity for a lot of fun. This weekend coming up is our, believe it or not, seventh annual Juneteenth celebration here in the town of Highlands. So we actually got more time celebrating than the federal government. <laughs> so we are, we've got... Uh, on Saturday morning at 10 a.m. at the Buffalo Soldier Field on West Point, the lineup will occur for everybody that's participating in the parade. And uh, the rally point is the Buffalo Soldier Monument. We'll have a, sh a brief sort of um, introductory event there. We're going to have a Civil War dressed uh, veteran who will do an enactment of sorts. I don't want to reveal his name right now, so you have to come to see who it's going to be. But uh, it should be fun as he educates us on the history of, of uh, that time frame. And so we'll have lots of motorcycles participating, both the Buffalo Soldiers Motorcycle Club of West Point and the uh, American Legion Riders will, will also participate. And at 11 a.m. is when the parade actually starts. And we'll take off from the monument, head on down Main Street, and conclude the parade at Memorial Park. As usual, we'll do our annual flag raising ceremony. And that's where the Juneteenth flag gets raised up the flagpole. And then we'll have a short um, celebration of sorts. A special treat this year the guest speaker is none other than Frederick Douglass. Yeah, that Frederick Douglass from a long time. <laughs> He's coming back. So, so, so there's be somebody that is enacting Frederick Douglass with the whole get up. And I'm, I'm not going to reveal who that is either. So you have to come to see it. But, but these two individuals, thank you so much for their participation. They are definitely professional at what they do. And they want to give our community a special treat. And we should have a few vendors out there. Um, I think the um, Grand Mango, which we're familiar with at our farmer's market, I think they have confirmed that they'll be there, and maybe a few of our local vendors will also be there. So there should be some fun, some music there, courtesy of, of John Flynn. Uh, we surely appreciate the commander of the American Legion for his many hours of community service, and he'll support again that, that particular day. Um, and then that's it for Juneteenth. And I think that's all I got, Supervisor. So I yield the remainder of my time to my colleague <laughs> to the right. Since I put it on you tonight, you might just mention that if anybody wants to yeah. be listed in the uh, right. program, that actually today was the last day, but I'm sure tomorrow they'll accept. Uh, uh, <laughs> so the supervisor is absolutely right. So there's a program being designed for the Juneteenth celebrations, 
and there are opportunities folks for folks to market their businesses or their clubs or whatever they would like uh, the point of contact is the center uh, of Highland Falls Incorporated and so today is is technically the deadline but if you get it to us tomorrow I'm sure we can make it happen so so please reach out to Miss Ann Molina or Miss D Marino uh, and I think those are the two committee members. Oh, one thing, you jarred my memory. So the committee has asked if there's anyone out there in the community that has two convertibles and willing to allow those convertibles to be in the parade so the senior citizens of the community or senior residents could ride and wave to the crowd, that would certainly be appreciated. Looking for two convertibles to be in the parade. And I wanna say, well, I have the mic. Thanks to West Point, they are participating and they are providing some resources for that parade. And that's all I have. Councilman Sullivan. Okay. Good evening, everybody. Very nice report, Ty. I usually start with the Zoning Board of Appeals. Don't mean to sound repetitious, but it's open to the public and it's held on the third Wednesday of every month here when they need to meet. So on the 21st of this month, they do need to meet. It won't be a public hearing because this is this person's first time. It's for a matter in Highland Falls. It requires, I think, several area variances. And that'll be Wednesday night, the 21st at 7 o'clock here. Um, the planning board, I'm not their liaison anymore, but they meet the next night. They meet on the third Thursday, which is the 22nd. I don't know what no, all they have. It's a week early. It's one of those months where oh, we. Oh, so they're ahead. Okay. Right. All right. June Are they 15th. this Thursday? Yep. Okay. Sorry June 15th. About that. Okay. Thank you. So this Thursday at 7 o'clock, the planning board will meet here um, on the sewer. So Bob's going to have, I think, a little bit more in the sewer than I do tonight because we had two entities bother us this year. The EPA, which was unexpected and never had them before, and the DEC, which is annual. So I know the DEC final report, Fung sent it to you, and, and you have uh -huh. all that stuff. I didn't get a copy of it yet. <clears throat> the average daily flow for the month of May at our plant was 102,000 gallons per day, and there was under two inches of rain. That's 85% capacity. Uh, we received in our budget transfer as part of the reason for it a $19,000 bill for a new pump and pump station number two, which is over by Corbin Hill. If you remember, three and two both had $12,000 pumps burn up in the same week. So we had standby pumping there. We didn't get charged for that. That probably would have been about $6,000. So the $19,000 bill was for two $3,600 call outs for the guys doing the work there and for the pump itself. We can cover that with the budget transfer out of sewer main construction tonight. Sewer main construction is normally used to TV camera the pipes. I'm hoping that the EPA and the DEC and everybody's really happy with us for a short period of time because we have another $12,000 bill coming in for pump station three that we haven't gotten to yet. So we're gonna be doing another budget transfer when that time comes. It can't be helped. You can't have one pump alone by itself. If it fails, you're going to make the evening papers. Um, <clears throat> so that's it on the sewer, unless whatever Bob might have on the DEC when he does his report, their final thing. So the building department, uh, last month I had a pretty extensive report on different matters going on, a shed on a property. Uh, there's a 30-day limit law to staying in a hotel uh, in the village of Highland Falls. I had talked about all that stuff. I'm not going to get too involved in all that except to say there's a particular hotel which um, their garbage cans are screened in, their grass is cut. We're moving forward handsomely with some of the things that we're doing. And, you know, I, I don't get like getting involved in the political stuff. I, I really welcome the village board to talk to me. Jimmy Raymond stopped by my house the other day after the fishing derby, which kudos to him for that whole thing. I conversed with Melanie a little bit about the building department. And there's all this talk about them getting their own code enforcement officer, and that's fine. All I have to say is we have the best Orange County has to offer between Gabby and Phil. They do a great job. We have a consultant helping them out. That's all being done for $140,000 a year. 
So if there's something I'm doing wrong and being charged at that department, I'm very approachable. Anybody, anytime can approach me and tell them what's on their mind if they choose to. I always email all the information to the village board. If we have a water leak of 100,000 gallons a day, they know about it. And I will continue to do that because the people I represent require it. And I will continue to do that. On the report for the month of May, we had 14 permit applications were received. 14 permits were issued. Three certificates of compliance. 15 building permit inspections. 13 violation notices were issued. Two violations were closed out. Uh, eight municipal searches were completed. One of them was for a house I sold. One planning board application received, and there were 12 FOIL requests. So FOIL requests takes time. Gabby being full-time down at that office takes care of all that stuff. And also, I'm about to talk about water a little bit. I don't have anything written down, so it won't be that long. There's maps and whatnot that have been at large. When we get a copy of them, she digitizes them. Kelly had the sewer map. I think it helped you out. From, that's from 1986, and it's fading away. But now we have it digitally. And with diamond maps, I've been talking with them. I'm trying to get it that we can get our tax maps in vector form and superimpose over that whole Google Earth thing every parcel accurately and begin to use that. I think it's very valuable. Um, and as I lead into that, the water department. So it was a really, really good month because I went, actually went down to the trailer park. I know they fixed a couple leaks. One was by Unit 53. I don't think their leaks were all that substantial, but I know they fixed at least two of them. I heard possibly three. I believe they paid their bill, so that's all good. Um, and, and now I'm going to talk about down in Fort Montgomery. When they put the water in, it was MTBE and Jeff Cassidy did it, and it was a settlement master. I think we paid half and they paid half. Not everything would be as I would like it to have been, but the settlement master had control over that, and that's how it went down. I cite his example at the Old Oak, not the Old Oak itself, but Oakwood Road. Before you go down that road, there's a meter pit, and then the rest of the houses are on. There's no meters in those houses. It's quantitative from there. So in the event there were a leak downstream from that two, three, four hundred feet, we would know about it from that meter pit. Over at the Catholic Church, there's also a water main that runs back about seven or eight hundred feet, and there is no meter pit on that one. The meters are at the individual domiciles back at the end of the road. Well, I gotta say a big thank you to our DPW. They're becoming experts on this stuff with Greg Marr, Ryan Falk, Gary Boyce told me not to mention his name, gonna mention it anyway. Uh, I'm not if your son Mervin ran the back hall, whatever. The whole crew down there did a great job and it was a mother load because I'm gonna tell you it was probably leaking about forty thousand gallons a day. It was a two inch flare, they're hard to work with, that has been repaired. So we're down now to using no more than eighty five thousand gallons a day. We were up around hundred and thirty thousand. So that was a huge repair. And in that 700 feet, if you had a meter pit at the beginning, you'd have a way of knowing that. But without having one, I'm not sure if we should put one in now. There's not one there, so that whole private run, you have no way of knowing that it would be leaking. Uh, just wanted to thank them. The uh, Environmental Advisory Committee is going to meet via Zoom on this Friday night, as we usually do. And just... Uh, Again, you know, with, with Ramis come, Jimmy Ramis coming to the last meeting, I'm glad he did. I'm glad the derby went well, and I thank him for stopping by my house to chat with me, and that's my report. Thank you, sir. Chief, you have anything? <coughs> I have an answer for a broken bridge. <coughs> oh, not yet. <laughs> I'm working on it. <coughs> um, you had short notice. Let's see. Month of May. We did 300 directed patrol assignments, responded to 180 calls for service. We stopped 95 cars, issued 48 tickets, had 13 motor vehicle accidents, and made three arrests. All right. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And we're working on uh, more traffic enforcement. Thank you. 
Storm King Run. The Rotary Club of West Point uh, is going to do the Storm King Run again. Uh, the race starts in Highland Falls, uh, just north of Washington Gate, and uh, it, it proceeds um, along 218, crossing a short distance to the town of Cornwall and then returning to the finish line near Washington Gate. The permit requires approval from the town of Highlands. I ask that we uh, that you provide the approval to the following address. I have, I have a letter to send them back. So I'll ask for a motion to approve. Uh, what organization is that? Uh, the, the Rotary. Okay. Uh, I'll make the motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I'll sign that and get it off to them. I'll, I'll sign it and give it to you, and you can get it off okay. to them. Thank you. Okay, I have an application for an event at Mindock Park. It's called Dancing Under the Stars. Um, it's, uh, there's no rain date. It's on July the 3rd. Um, let's see what else. There'll be live music and a DJ. I think, uh, has she been in contact with you, Chief? Provide some? Not yet. Okay. Um, uh, it's, on, it's on the permit. She's going to ask for some help down there with the police. And uh, I guess they're going to ask the ambulance corps to, to uh, be down there. They're going to get the dial a bus on it. I, I don't have the uh, insurance form at this time. Um, so we can uh, approve this in lieu of insurance, but uh, I'll need to get that insurance form. I know the village does something similar to that all the time. And I, I've made it very clear to the uh, organization that uh, last year apparently they had someone down there selling alcohol, uh, a bona fide business, but uh, uh, there's no alcohol allowed to be sold down in Mine Dock Park. You've got the railroad tracks and the river, and it's not an atmosphere that you should be selling alcohol in. And we're so, fortunate to have it from the PIPC. We don't want that to go away. So. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. So um, if you would like to approve the uh, application um, upon receiving the... Uh, written insurance papers. I would make the motion. We approve. I'll second it. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 A comprehensive reconnaissance inspection of the uh, sewer plant was done by DEC and the facility was found operating in a satisfactory manner. That's all they had to say about it. Other, uh, and I'll, I'll, since you didn't get this, I'll pass this on to you. Okay. All right. Um, they have a whole bunch of sheets here to it with uh, to an explanation of, of what they looked at down there, basically. So, thank you, Richie. For, for keeping on them. Thank you to the men down there that are keeping the place clean and keeping it proper. Uh, it's doing good. We're that, in pretty good that, shape. That's very good. We, we, yeah, great we, job. So if you would pass that on to... Uh, Thank you. Councilman. Um, I'm proposing a, a change to the uh, employee handbook. Uh, as it reads now, um, on bereavement leave, there, there is nothing in there for part-time employees. Uh, the uh, full-time employees read just like the union contracts, uh, basically. They get five days uh, for immediate family members or what have you. I'm suggesting, suggesting that part-time employees be granted two consecutive scheduled work days of paid 
bereavement in the event of a death of an immediate family member. Uh, if the board thinks that's a, a good thing to do, I'll have Justin give us a re resolution for next meeting. If their typical shift is four hours, they would get eight hours is what you're saying, something like that. Yeah. All good. Yeah. 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 Need me to make a motion or? No, I'll. No, I, no. I, okay. All right. I'll, I'll have a resolution for okay. next meeting. Okay, we good. Had that happened to someone recently, and I had to work until 9 o'clock that night. I felt bad I couldn't attend a week, but I couldn't make it. Um, good news from the Water District also. Um, back in 2017, the Water District borrowed $127,127 from the B Fund. Water District Number 2 is now in a position to be paying back that loan. <coughs> so Kelly is asking the board to approve paying $27,127 back to the B Fund uh, as of today, the District 2 has cash on hand of $175,653. Uh, so we'll be able to make another payment at the end of next year. So I'll make that motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, Kelly, go ahead and pay him. Okay, uh, Justin, you might want to explain the next resolution because... Uh, sure. Uh, that, was, that was a very big agreement, which um, <laughs> it was big agreement, but uh, but all pretty standardized and what you've been uh, using for several years now in the community development block grant program, which is administered um, by Orange County, but which receives uh, federal and state funding for for programs, um, and. Uh, typically it's a three-year contract period sometimes they just amend it by extending that here they made some modest little changes and tweaks to the agreement but in essence you are just re-upping uh, in the uh, community development block grant program and urban county qualification uh, for Orange County okay, uh, for uh, 2024 2025 and 2026 we have a resolution to authorize a municipal agreement with the Orange County in, uh, in connection with the Community Development Block Grant Program and Urban County Qualification, quali uh, qualification uh, Cooperation Agreement for 24, 25, and 26. Do I have a motion to move the resolution? I'll make the motion. Yes, yeah, second. Roll call, please. Councilmember Sullivan? Aye. Councilmember King? Aye. Supervisor Lucy? Aye. I guess, uh, Kelly, maybe you can explain the next resolution having to do with the Municipal Reserve Fund. Uh, so last year during the budget season, we uh, budgeted for the Municipal Reserve Fund to be $1.5 million. Uh, we did not have enough money to fund that over the two years so we've budgeted for it and we have deposited the money in our class account but we never actually created the reserve fund so I asked Justin to put together the resolution to actually create the reserve fund so that it's there when, when the money is going to be spent if you remember that was for uh, recreation to get a mule yes <laughs> not a horse a mule okay <laughs> <laughs> uh, Yeah, okay. Yeah, but once we get to the point where we have enough money in there and we buy the mule, then, then, then it's, it's a, uh, before we buy it, I guess, uh, we have a 30 So it's a record. weird one. This one actually requires it both times, right? So this, just the creation of the fund, is subject to permissive referendum. Often, often when you do that, then the expenditure is not. In this case, based on the type of expenditure and the general nature of it, you'll need it now and again. But not a big deal okay so uh, and June, you have that notice right for the paper uh, you sent me okay uh, I don't I don't I don't know that that's a hundred percent accurate but okay I will make sure oh you don't have the notice 
No, I don't have anything. None of the resolutions. Okay, well, Justin, you'll send it to me in the morning, right? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, okay. no, sorry for that. It's okay. All right, we have a resolution to establish a capital reserve fund in accordance with general municipal law, section 6C, recreation department reserve. Do I have a motion to move the resolution? Motion. Second. Roll call, please. Councilmember Sullivan? Aye. Councilmember King? Aye. Supervisor Lindsay? Aye. We have a, a request from the Ambulance Corps for certain coverage during the 4th of July holiday. Um, it has to do with our full-time employees that, that are um, with the Ambulance Corps. The holiday happens to fall on a Tuesday. One of the two uh, full-time employees does not work Tuesdays, and the other one only works four hours on Tuesdays. So uh, Jeff would like to have them work the holiday at uh, you know, time, holiday and time and a half is what he's asking for, uh, which is really kind of, Justin, it's kind of in our uh, employee handbook and kind of not, when I showed you tonight. Yeah, I do think there's a provision for overtime on holidays. Um, but that is um, uh, that does not mean that these requests have to be granted, certainly, right? It's if there's a determination made by the board that it's appropriate for the work, then it would require as the supervisor. So this is for the Fourth of July. We have one more meeting before that, and I would rather wait till we have a whole board and we can sit in the executive session and discuss this. Okay, I'm good with that. Sound all right? Yeah. Okay. You are cordially invited to the Highland Falls Intermediate School, 8th grade, moving up Tuesday, June the 20th at 6.30 p.m. That leaves me out. Uh, Deputy, can you go to that? I'd be happy to. Then I'll give the this to again, you. date June 20th? June the I'll give you the, the, okay. the invite. You would pass that off to him. And from O'Neill High School, graduating class of 2023 invites you to the commencement exercises on Wednesday, June the 21st at 7 p.m. Everybody in town knows what I do on Wednesdays. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Deputy, can you go? That's on, on Wednesday, June 21st? Yes. Um, so the answer is yes. There's a ZBA meeting, which is going to last about 15 minutes, and then I can go to the graduation. Yes. Okay. When I was on the Board of Education, it was my favorite night of the year, was to be able to give a kid their diploma. So I'll be happy to go. <laughs> um, a shout out to our recreation director, um, Aaron Falk. Uh, he received an award uh, last week uh, as an Asset Builder Outstanding Youth Worker Award. Uh, he's provided a positive environment for the youth which he uh, serves for the past nine years. He's worked diligently to increase opportunities for youth to get involved and be connected to their community at large. He received this um, award up in Newburgh, was it? Sunny Orange. Ocean? Sunny Orange. Sunny Orange, that's right. So congratulations to Aaron and uh, all the executives. Keep up the good work. He got awards from three different entities, I think, from the uh, um, uh, Assemblyman uh, Ryan. Assemblyman, uh, no, he's not an assemblyman. Congressman. Congressman. Congressman, Congressman. Congressman Ryan, um, Chris Yukas, and the county, I believe. Am I right? And James. Uh, and too, I forgot. But, but very nice. At the... Um, 
Oh, just to be noted in the minutes, apparently back in March, we agreed that uh, we would send on this, uh, send the plans on to the county to put the water tank in. Um, I don't know why, but I just signed it. Um, it just came up, and our, our engineer sent me a note saying, gee, could you do this so we can get this moving? Well, in March, we, we approved it, so I don't know who was waiting for what, but uh, it's done. I, I, uh, um, I signed it. And we talked about the, I'm, I'm a little bit disappointed, and, and I get the morning off. One of the, I'm famous for these Thursday morning meetings once in a while. I haven't seen him in a while. Maybe we can bring him over and clean a few things up with him. Because that. that water tank was supposed to be built like last fall. So I'm a little disappointed. Even with COVID and everything else, it was still supposed to be built last fall. So, <clears throat> Well, if you could organize the meeting, obviously I'll I, could, meeting. I, could, I could be there. Um, and on the other, when we had the meeting back in December, Justin was there. And we had a third party private person looking for the water and whatnot. We have it resolved. You got the right people doing it. It's working out fantastic. Um, we can't say enough about Gary and the DPW on that once again. I have to look at that ARPA money because I think there's a deadline to spend it by. I'll check tomorrow. Yeah. If it's yeah. not met, we're really going to have a meeting, let me tell you. So. I'll send you guys an email tomorrow. All right. Uh, at the second annual Community Day, uh, Family Fun Day, the uh, West Point Buffalo Soldiers uh, came on their motorcycles and they presented an award to Sophia Farina of the O'Neill High School. It was a scholarship award. Um, I, I, I don't want to say the amount out loud, but I'll tell you guys <laughs> later if you want to know. And she also received a, an award. I, I don't know how they're broken down. Maybe you do, Ty. Uh, you have the Buffalo Soldiers group that, that's here locally, and then it gets bigger. Yes, yeah, so, so the Buffalo Soldiers Motorcycle Club is a national organization that has chapters, and that we just happen to have the West Point chapter here locally that works in our community oftentimes doing community They service. got their award from our chapter, and the, I don't know, we have a few chapters, chapters that are sections maybe? Yeah, well, they got the West Point guys. They have another chapter, I believe, over in... Um, Westchester somewhere. Well, maybe it's a national group. Probably then? could have been a national it group. Could have been the national. Yeah. yeah. And she got notified that day that, that she got that award. Also. Wow. That's Congrats really nice. to her. That's a big That's deal. Really nice. And any other public comment? Anybody else? Chief. I just remembered uh, my dot park. Yes, sir. A couple of my officers have been finding vehicles parked on the river side of the railroad tracks. And they're hearing the same thing. There's no sign telling me I can't. And there's only that one small sign that's in the bulletin board area. No, there's a sign that, there's a sign that says no swimming, no this, and no parking. As soon as you drive in, it's right in front of you. Two of them, so they don't like no vehicles beyond this point, so they know that we most certainly can and will. Okay, because you know we, we've we've noticed in the past because actually that's one of our directed patrol checks now. No, I've started to see the same thing. Be honest, finding with you. vehicles between the tracks and the water. Yeah, a lot more frequently at night now. But one of my pet peeves is the people that go across the tracks and park right in front of the sign and sit there and look at you like you're an idiot. I, I, I didn't see no sign. So uh, I'm afraid, we'll put another sign up, but I'm afraid we'll put another sign up and it'll just lead to my aggravation. <laughs> that park is a home run. It's river access. You no, know, there, there's limitations because it's not ours. It belongs to the PIPC. We manage it. <coughs> I kayak out of there pretty frequently. Remember last year I kayaked on the same night there were people in distress. I had about seven emergency vehicles waiting for me when I got back, but I didn't need them. But it is a nice little park down there, and just the way we use it is fine. You know, if they want to have an event, they can bring in their electric and all that. I would not be a fan 
of having like people towing their boat down there to launch because it would be people from all over the place that would be doing it. So it's very nice. And, and it's very, very well used. Uh, I go down on our weekends and uh, there, there's a lot. And now they're starting to get smart and they're bringing um, uh, umbrellas for, because there's holes in the picnic benches. So they're bringing um, umbrellas down there. So it's, it's, it's really nice. I'm, I'm, I'm very proud of that park it myself is. personally. I'm sorry. Does it close at dusk? Yes. It's supposed to. Oh, yes, at dusk it's supposed to close, yes. We, we've also found a lot of people, not like, like avid photographers, doing a lot of railroad photography. Yeah. And I personally found several at night doing a lot of nighttime, you know, moon bridge photography. I felt bad for tell them to hit the road because I would set up my tripod and everything and do the same thing. Yeah, yeah. But it, it, it does get used and for the mo other than the occasional large group that appears when certain other public parks are closed due to capacity, mm -hmm. it's not abused. No. I know you see the kids running around there and everything. That's why that's why Basically, as far as I'm concerned, there's no parking on the other side of the tracks is because you do have families down here, kids running around. You don't need people driving around. The only ones that, that if they've got a canoe or a kayak on top of their car, they can run over there and drop it off or what have you. Picnic lunches, they can drop off. But parking over there, we'll get another sign. <laughs> As for a motion to adjourn? Well, I wanted to mention one thing. Yes, uh, young Colin Monaghan a high school student at O'Neill. I think he was a freshman going into the sophomore year. I just want to acknowledge his uh, community service once again, but more importantly, he is very close to finishing the Eagle Scout project. I guess they started uh, last week, and, and looks like he anticipates being done this week. And the project is something right there on uh, right outside their gate that's going to honor the Buffalo soldiers. Oh, wow. Nice work. Yes. So look, already. look like we might have two here shortly. Yeah. Uh, we, we probably should have got the one down in my doc, uh, in uh, Brooks's Park. He probably should have asked the town board if he could do it. No, I, uh, he came around to the business, local businesses asking for a donation and explaining what he was doing. And I, I haven't gotten to him yet. But uh, he, he should really just get our permission to be down in, in the park, working in the park. So if he hurts himself doing something, I guess it doesn't make any difference. Our insurance will cover it one way or another. <laughs> it's better to ask. <laughs> okay, that's all I had. That's all we got. Anybody else? Motion to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Okay, Aye. Right, thank you.